bit stormy out there. I wonder if I could get down to the beach today. Look a bit choppy today. <sighs> oh, I think I'll stay inside and play trains. Oh, hello. One second. Hello and welcome to Bjodlington on Sea. Uh, and here is another video about what I got for Christmas. And I've got a pile of things over here to take over there to add to the desk to have a look at. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to the desk. And I'd like to say a very special thank you to everyone who has stuck with this through January, because I know it's a long and gloomy month, and we're only a third of the way through. So, yeah, um, I hope I'm keeping you entertained. And thanks very much, like I said, for coming and watching the videos, liking them and commenting. Um, and if you ever have any questions about the railway or whatever, just ask away. So yes, let's start off with the first thing, and I've chosen this one because it's probably the newest, the cleanest, and um, the simplest, I suppose. And it is this. Now this is the Hornby Railroad GWR Composite Coach, which is their old, uh, I think, collet coach tooling. Um, this one is the R... Where is it? Uh, 4523, and the number of the coach is 6135. And it's kind of interesting that I've got this one, because um, I have two things to compare it to. So first I'll get it out of the box, um, and see. And, let see, it's not second hand, but it looks in almost new condition. There appears to be some sort of dirtiness on the bottom of where these wheels were. So maybe it's had a bit of running. Um, now, I can't remember if there were metal axles on my other railroad coach, but I will just check now. No. Okay, then. Put that back there. So my railroad brake coach of the same type uh, has plastic wheels like the Mark 1s do, but um, these wheels are quite clearly metal. So perhaps someone has changed them out in the past. Um, they turn nice and freely, and yeah, it's probably going to match perfectly the livery of the uh, railroad brake coach from this range. However, as I showed in the video of these coaches before, they have been in the range a long time, and they still have, um, you know, the the heritage there, I suppose, of, of um, coaches that have been in the range a long time have had many different liveries. This one has had the same livery a few times, but in slightly different variations. And this actually, the railroad one actually has a different number to the older ones that I have, because this one is numbered 6135. Whereas the older ones are 6024. And so this one is probably the earliest one I have. And this is the sort of shiny, dark chocolate kind of coloured one with the yellowy um, cream plastic. Uh, which is an interesting finish. And will probably look alright if it was in a rake on its own. So I'll just put those two there side by side so you can see. And then there's the sort of middle era... Um, version which has a more matte finish to the chocolate uh, colour, a slightly greyer brown I suppose to the railroad one and uh, it's this one and once I get it in focus you'll be able to see it says first and it has the GWR roundel on it and you know they, they all have the same um, transfers and everything in the same place so it's just the number that's different and the shade and if I take the two most recent ones and hold them like this and get them back into focus you'll see that the chocolate color is 
slightly different. I mean, if I put them end to end like that, you can probably just about make out the difference. Uh, the cream seems to be fairly close, but it's ever so paler on the earlier one, which is uh, on the right hand side. So uh, yeah, that's a nice um, a nice addition to this um, rake of coaches that I now have, because I have three of these and a break coach, so I'll have to get a buffet coach at some point, but um, yeah, I'd say that uh, the colouring on the railroad one probably looks the best um, so that's um, a plus for the railroad version, and how nice that it's got metal axles, which I wasn't expecting, because I was expecting it to be you know, just plastic, but I guess because it's second hand um, Santa and the Elves must have decided to put some nice metal wheels on it. So I'll have those on the railway together with the brake coach in a few minutes. And now I will pick something else to open. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? We've got a brown box. See us. This is a brown box. I had to pause a bit to fix the camera. Um, open this now. But to point out, if the camera falls down at any point, it's because my tripod is broken. The attack. But anyways, in this box we have some coaches again, because that's the theme of this episode. These are a pair of. Graham Farish Suburban Coaches, ready to run in Southern Railway Green. And I actually opened these up and had a look at them and was able to do some research on them because I didn't really know anything about them, but mainly because um, the construction of these coaches is sort of like a kit construction and um, one of the plates, you see they've got Underneath they have um, these, the, the sort of truss bits here, they are separate and they go over the top of plates which hold the bogies um, on. And so one of these plates had come off uh, in the post and I had to glue it back together. So I was able to open that up anyways and have a look. And as I mentioned in the wagon uh, video, um, people of a certain generation will know um, and people who do their research will know that Graham Farish, the uh, N-gauge arm of uh, Bachman, used to make double O-gauge models. And these coaches, I think, originated in the 1950s as like a, a, a metal kit. I did have some a long time ago, a set of four, and they had like the the bogies were like a kit bogey as well. You had to build it and they weren't very good. Um, so I've got these coaches now and... Um, they are very um, dated, I should say, but generally they give a really nice sort of impression of you know a southern branch line or or inner city suburban um, coach. And I I read online something about the in in some of the coaches the handles and things were reversed on one side because of the way that they were printed. They were mirror imaged, but um, I don't know about that. So there's a nice um, sort of attempt at a duck it on this end, or sort of like a guards like lean to a bit. I know, but um, yeah, it's not it's not detailed. So uh, yeah, these these are Graham Farish suburban coaches, and um, to give a little bit of detail about them, um, they are supposed to be 57 foot coaches. They're sort of um, generic suburban coaches and they were released at the same time as some mainline coaches and each in the in the big four liveries and I'm not sure if they were in BR as well um, but the brake coach the product code for that was 10613 and 10603 for the um, suburban um, non brake coach and it, it was something like 1060 and then like a number for the, the normal coach and then a one instead of a zero in that number for the brake coach of that version. And in 1978, according to a poster, they were two pounds 75 each. 
And the running number on this coach is 7253. And on the brake coach, it's 2697. And they have first and third compartments then. And let ring and stuff that I'll show you uh, in a minute. Uh, but I did find this quote from the 1978 poster I was looking at from Graham Parrish. This is in their own words, I think. It says, Many model railway enthusiasts still talk about October 1975. That was the time that Graham Farish first released their fabulous double-O coach range in four regional liveries, suburban and mainline, with super detail, needle axle bearings and longer rate coupling hooks. Public demand was immediate and overwhelming. It still is. And so I suppose that makes them a bit like um, a Hatton's Genesis coach of their time, if you will, if there wasn't a decent suburban coach around. I mean, there was the Trying Suburban, which... Um, was basic and chunky and uh, didn't really have the livery application as it were so these are much nicer in terms of what was available at the time in uh, in the 70s I suppose um, I'll try and get it to focus there so you've got Southern Railway and those are the third compartments and uh, I think they're all thirds on in this coach just check yeah, so it's a it's break third essentially, and there's the guards and luggage compartment there, um, and you know the lining is like a nice sort of shiny gold, the green paint is very matte. There is a detailed sort of interior, and you can see the moulding on the bottom where it says Graffar Limited Made in Britain. You can see these are the seats in there that then are inside, and um, I assume I think the roofs come off. Usually you see the Great Western ones of these, and the roofs have chips all in the end where people have tried to get the roofs off, presumably to detail the inside, and have failed. So that also might mean that the plastic of the roof is quite brittle, so I'll have to be careful with those. And so this is the other one, and this does have first class compartments. It says um, third, 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 first, 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 third, third third so you've got the first class in the middle and um the thirds on the outside and so when they said um super detailed um uh, i mean i still i um struggle to see the the real super detailedness because they are still um quite basic i'm not sure what they meant by longer raked couplings because they've just got their square grim ferret had square hooped tension locks and there's the, there's the end the ends are all the same they've got uh, molded footsteps which are um they're not that bad to be honest i suppose if you're looking for the super detailed part they are um you know i can put my fingernail on it you know they actually do stick out and there's there's pipe work and stuff as well but yeah they've got these square uh tension lock couplings and i assume needle point they mean uh pinpoint uh, axles this was not in place and you know hopefully they don't fall out during running because they're all um they're all out of their their positions um so to try and find the the bearings i suppose that these are supposed to sit in their plastic bits um that's that's not looking too good for those um, I'll have to compare them and make sure that they're the same axles on both poach, I suppose. I mean, that's not good, is it? That they're, they're hanging out. How has that happened in the few seconds that I've been, been holding it? I'm not entirely sure. Do they go further in? Where is the hole? Goodness. What have I got? So the old design of bogey was shocking, but this is going to be, um... Testing my patience, I think. <laughs> Just to hope that it stays together. What about this side? Oh, yeah, they've got the same wheels as well and the same sort of problem. Okay, so they're not too bad on that side. Okay. Um, I have talked a lot about these coaches now, so I'm going to go on to the last coaches that I have here and worry about the running of these. Right, so it's not looking too good for the Graham Farish coaches, but I do have two items here which are 
quite different. So here we have two Lima HO Continental coaches, and they are from something called the Train Bleu Paris Tennis, as it says over here. So I'll take them out and show you them. And I'll try to be quick because I waffled on a lot about those Grand Farish coaches. Um, so the first one I have here says Carroza Con Letty at that end and Vucha Litz on that end. Um, so I think that just means uh, carriage with beds um, in some European languages. And at the top it says, Compagni internationally des wagons lit et des grands express Europeans. And then on the other coach, which is similar but not quite the same, it says, Sovvogn and Schlafwagen. Schlafwagen, I think, is German for sleeping car. So this is sort of like a, it says, International Schlafwagen Gesellschaft. But it also says, um, Train blue, uh, Paris Denise. So this car for is they both say four seven eight seven whatever that means. But this one is, uh, I think number L three o nine two o three. I looked up was the the number for that uh, product code. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about. Um, oh no, maybe that's that's. Oh, it is that one? I'm I'm not sure. Anyways, I couldn't really find that much information about the models. Um, I just realised that that's not in focus. Never mind. Um, but the blue train, I suppose, I can explain that. So the um, company does wagons lit, or the CIWL, um, is the International Sleeping Car Company, which began in 1872. Um, and there's a, there's a the name of the man who's uh, inspired by Pullman's, I think, in America, um, who went on to make the Orient Express. This is the second train that he came up with. Um, or the company came up with, and he was a Belgian called George Nagelmackers, I think. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right. Um, but basically, the Train Bleu Paris Denise was actually a train that ran from Calais to Rome. Well, they tried to run it from Calais to Rome, but in the end, it was more like Calais to Nice via Paris, um, I think. So that started in 1886 and ran until um, something like 1938. But then there was also a train on the, of the same sort of thing that ran to 2003. So my Googling was not brilliant, but that's a rough site history. Um, but the, the train that went um, along the Mediterranean, whatever it was meant to be, uh, was called the Chemins de Feu de Paris uh, Lyon et à la Mediterranée or something. So, yeah, I don't speak French. <laughs> but um, they're nice because I'm imagining that maybe... There's a boat train from Bjorklington on sea, and maybe some of these coaches could have passed through Bjorklington and, uh, you know, gone onto a boat to the continent. So um, that's quite nice. But what I have to compare them with is uh, a coach which was in a previous video, which was made by Duke Playcraft, which is um, a version, presumably, of this, because uh, it has the same writing at the top. And it says, Company International Leaders, Wagons, Litz, at Grand Express, European, Voiture Litz, which is on a different end. It's on this end, on this one. Um, and it's just a sleeping car on this one. But unfortunately, they have two very different styles of couplings, and they're not really cross-compatible. So I'll have to get more of these to run with these, and more of these to run with these. And have a nice kind of blue train. Um, they're not really highly detailed. They're fairly blocky and plastic, they have metal axles and um, silver roofs, you know. The end detail is a bit better, they've got sort of um, corridor connections, um, there you go, and one of them is missing a hoop on its coupling, which is not brilliant, um, but I think all of the buffers are intact. So I'm going to go put these on the railway now and get them on, because... Um, I want to see how badly these Graham Farish coaches are going to do. So here we are behind the cliff. There is the 56XX from Buckman, number 5667. And it's got the uh, older coach, then the 
middle-aged coach and then the new railroad coach uh, coupled up to the other railroad coach and as you can see their liveries uh, match perfectly and they have the same colored roofs and then over here we have the LBSC E4 also from Buckman which is going to be um, pulling the blue train so the, the lighting is not the best at the moment in here because the weather outside is terrible there you go that's a bit better so there's the blue train and there's a Pullman on the end of it and then I have my repainted Hornby Terrier Minories um, and that is going to be pulling to the um, Graham Farish Suburbans and at the time of placing them on the rails the axles were in the correct positioning and hopefully it stays that way while they're running so uh, we'll get them moving in a second okay so we're gonna get these running now um, so we'll be looking out to see whether the axles just fall out of the Graham Farish coaches and whether the uh, E4 can stay coupled to its train um, it, it turns out that actually it, they do have all of the coupling hoops on the HO coaches. It was just some of them that been stuck in an up position. Uh, I'm not used to the couplings. So um, so it's coupled up, so it should be fine. And what I'll do is I'll get the 56XX going first because I can trust those all the railroad coaches um, to stay kind of uh, coupled up, unless I jinxed it. So that's going, and now we're going to start with the E4. I think they're going at a nice, gentle pace because obviously people might be sleeping on their way to the continent. And um, last but not least, we have the Terrier. So I'm just to start that one off and hope that it uh, doesn't stall on the points going at that sort of speed. The blue tack or something like that, but it can be gained. Um, we'll just see now if there are any issues, and then I'll get some money for it. No, they okay. Right. Let's see them running close up then.
suppose we're going to stop that there. Beat Bob's uh, time to end the video. So, we'll stop Minaries in the station, and then we'll see who gets there first. Oh, I think the 56XX and the Great Western coaches have made it to the station first. You can't really see because of the way the camera's angled, because like I said, it's broken. Uh, the stand is. So yeah, um, thanks again to everyone who's watched and subscribed and commented. And uh, that was another video of what I got for Christmas. So I should have a couple more videos coming up uh, over the next week or so. But uh, yeah, until next time, thanks very much for watching. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. There's the subscribe bubble and the playlist thing. And uh, I suppose uh, that's it for now. I've been Alex, and uh, this is Pure Newton on Sea. And you have once again been a lovely audience. So until next time, ta ra!